Hello from Thailand, it's Joe, and in today's video, we are going to compare between the two monitors that I know you guys are interested in. Without further ado, let's jump right into it. A comparison between the first 5K with Thunderbolt 4 monitor, a Samsung Viewfinity S9, and an Apple Studio display. When you're looking to buy a monitor, one of the main things you have to consider is the image and panel quality. So, let's start with the panel. Both monitors have IPS panels. The Samsung Viewfinity S9 comes with a matte finish surface, while the Apple Studio display has a glossy screen. As you can see, the matte screen has less contrast and vibrancy, whereas the Apple monitor has more vibrant and punchy colors. They both have a maximum brightness of 600 nits. I'm in a room with light sources from the front and the back. As you can see, the Viewfinity S9 handles glare very well, while on the Apple screen, you can see some reflections. Both of these monitors have a 10-bit color depth and DCI-P3 color gamut. Samsung provides HDR600, which is better than none, while Apple didn't. Let's see how they handle the gradient from black to white. Some of you might be concerned that a matte screen would make the graphics and text less sharp. Well, check this out. Here's a test to see the clarity of text in different sizes, from 7 point to 12 point. On the left, we have the Samsung, and on the right, we have the Apple. If we zoom in, we'll see that the text from the matte screen is slightly less sharp. But for real-world use, I don't notice any significant difference. In my opinion, the downside of a matte screen is not the sharpness or low contrast but the viewing angle. Matte screens have slightly narrower viewing angles compared to glossy screens, whether you're looking from the sides, top, or bottom. Let's test how these monitors handle annoying light shining on them. First, I'll start with a small light tube. You can see that the matte screen handles the light pretty well, while on the glossy screen, you can see those reflections. Now, let's try a brighter light. I'll increase the light from low to max. On the glossy screen, you see those big reflections, but on the matte screen, it's more like a strip of brightness on one side. Let's try calibrating the monitors with the i1 Display Pro. After calibration, you can see that the contrast and colors of both monitors are much closer. The Viewfinity S9 has a hint of green, and the Apple Studio display has a touch of pink. So, I tried recalibrating both monitors a couple more times at night, and the colors became even closer. However, I still notice a slight color difference. And when you're in an environment with no annoying light or when you are in a well-light controlled environment, both of these monitors look pretty identical.
the Viewfinity S9 has a 5 milliseconds response time, and both of these monitors have a 60 Hz refresh rate. When it comes to gaming or reading articles with fast scrolling, it might not look super smooth. Now let's talk about the body of the monitors. The design of both Apple and Samsung is quite similar. The Apple monitor is made of aluminum, while the Samsung Viewfinity S9 monitor is made of silver plastic, designed in an ergonomic style that looks just as beautiful as the Apple monitor. The bezels of the Viewfinity are 7mm thick on the top and sides, while the bottom bezel is 13mm thick. In contrast, all the bezels of the Apple Studio display are 13mm thick. The thickness of the Viewfinity S9 is 17mm, while the Apple Studio display measures 19mm in thickness. The Apple Studio display features an aluminum body and is intelligently designed with speaker vents for ventilation. Apple is able to incorporate a built-in power adapter inside the monitor. On the other hand, the Viewfinity S9 has a slimmer body made of plastic, so they opted to use a larger separate black brick adapter instead. The Viewfinity S9 comes with one Thunderbolt 4, three USB-C port, and one mini display port. Meanwhile, Apple provides one Thunderbolt 3 port and three USB-C ports. Therefore, the Viewfinity S9 can receive signals from two devices. You can connect this monitor to a Mac using Thunderbolt 4 or USB-C and connect another computer with DisplayPort using the Mini DisplayPort. And you can switch between devices. Both monitors support fast charging for laptops and other devices through power delivery, up to 96 watts. The Viewfinity S9 comes with a silver tilt and rotate adjustable stand, which is considered an advantage because it allows us to adjust the height of the monitor to suit individual sitting positions. Additionally, it has Visa mount compatibility, enabling the use of a monitor arm if the stand is removed. In contrast, Apple offers the option to choose between a standard stand, an adjustable stand, or Visa mount, with each type of stand sold separately, resulting in a higher level of stability for the Apple monitor. However, the Viewfinity S9, despite offering more options, may exhibit slight wobbling. The Viewfinity S9 monitor offers adjustable height, with a minimum height of 5 cm and a maximum height of 17 cm from the desktop to the bottom edge of the screen. In contrast, the standard Apple monitor does not have height adjustment capabilities. The Viewfinity S9 monitor allows screen rotation in both vertical directions. Regarding the tilt function, the Apple Studio display can tilt up further, while both monitors have similar tilt capabilities when tilting down. The Samsung Viewfinity S9 comes with a detachable 4K ultra-wide camera which also tilt adjusting. On the other hand, the Apple Studio display comes with a 12 megapixels ultra-wide camera and the center stage function. In terms of color representation, the Apple camera tends to produce more vibrant colors, while the Samsung camera may appear less vibrant. However, the Samsung camera offers higher image resolution and a wider field of view. In terms of microphone performance, the Samsung microphone captures surrounding sounds more effectively, including ambient sounds, while the Apple microphone has a lower volume and picks up less ambient noise. This is some light taste. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. This is some light taste. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now, let's talk about the speakers. The Apple Studio display comes with up to six speakers, positioned at the top and bottom of the monitor, and it features spatial audio, and it also supports Dolby Atmos sound. On the other hand, the Samsung Viewfinity monitor has two 5 watts adaptive sound speakers on the left and right sides, which produce relatively flat and less dynamic sound. In addition to the main computer display functionality, the Samsung Viewfinity S9 offers several additional features that are not available on the Apple Studio display. Let's take a look at what they are. The Viewfinity S9 provides wireless connectivity, including support for Bluetooth, which allows us to connect speakers, keyboards, gaming joysticks, or other devices. 
It also supports Samsung DeX mode and Apple AirPlay. The Viewfinity S9 supports multi-view usage, so we can divide the screen into two displays. For example, one side can show the computer output while the other side can display content from a mobile device. Or, one side can show the computer output connected via display port, and the other side can display content from a computer connected via Thunderbolt port. While Apple comes with the A13 Bionic chip, which limits its functionality to center stage, spatial audio, and Hey Siri, Tizen OS on the Samsung Viewfinity S9 offers much more. Being the same operating system as smart TVs, this display supports a wide range of entertainment and usage options. It allows users to watch movies, listen to music from various apps, works on documents using Microsoft 365 apps, and participate in online meetings through Google Duo, among other capabilities. Since it functions as a smart monitor, Samsung provides a remote control, which is convenient for accessing various menus. The Viewfinity S9 also allows screen color calibration through the Samsung Smart Calibration app. However, I couldn't test the screen calibration by pairing my mobile device yet. The advantage of the Viewfinity S9 is that we can access and adjust various menus more extensively through the menu options in the device settings and the remote control. On the other hand, on an Apple display, we can adjust the volume and brightness through the function menu on the keyboard. However, changing menus on the Viewfinity S9 seems to be more complicated. We have to access deeper menus, for example, if we want to adjust the brightness, the quickest way is to access the quick menu by holding down the home button, then navigating to the pictures command to adjust the brightness. After that, we still have to select a menu to exit the screen. I would like to thank the users on Mac Rumors for recommending the better display app for adjusting brightness and sound through the keyboard. I have tried using it, and it works fine. However, reducing the brightness through this app seems to yield different results compared to directly reducing the brightness using the screen menu. In Thailand, the Viewfinity S9 comes with a 3-year warranty, while the Studio Display comes with a 1-year warranty. However, Apple offers the option to purchase Apple Care Plus to extend the warranty period. Regarding the warranty, I encountered an issue with my 2015 5K iMac, the pink edge problem, after the first year of warranty had expired. So, a longer warranty period would be better. Alright, we are done. I hope this helped if you are considering purchasing one of these fantastic monitors. So, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comment below. See you in the next review. Bye.